How's it going ladies and gents? Here it is, our first 2022 refreshed Silverado. This is a uh, red hot, as you can see, RST model. And it's a, a special car for me because not only is it the first refreshed version we got in, it's also my factory order and it's also a YouTube subscriber. So Dan, thank you very much for uh, being so kind to give me your business. Now the big update to these trucks is the refresh, right? So the front end is a brand new design. They kind of reshaped the front bumper, the grill. They moved the bow tie up a little higher. You got uh, you know some nice little, um, nice little switchback white and uh, amber turn signals that double as daytime running lights. You can see it even do a little, uh, little sequence pattern there when you do the unlock on the fob, which is pretty cool. This has all LED lights, including the fog lights, which are hard to see, but located at the bottom of the bumper there. Uh, I really like the way they made this gloss black on the grill. They also opened up these, uh, they opened up the grill a little bit. It looks like more of a, what you would see in like a Blazer RS or a Camaro, uh, just like more of a, a more of a wide open uh, grill to let more air flow in. And uh, I think it's a more aggressive design, in my opinion, uh, when compared to the previous body style. This truck also has like the black mirror caps, which is on RST. So everything's gonna be either body color or black. You know, there's very little chrome on this car, other than, you know, some of the emblems, you know, the Z71 emblem in the front and the ones in the back. Plus you also get a, uh, you get the chrome tips in the back because this does have the integrated dual exhaust. That's chrome, the RST, the Silverado, the bow tie surrounds. That's basically it. Everything else is gonna be either body color or black. I think it's very tastefully done. Uh, this also, as you can see here, is a crew cab short box, which is pretty much the most popular configuration of these trucks. Uh, we're gonna get into the interior of this truck because that's the other big update, which is the uh, what most people say was a much needed refresh or a much needed update to the interior of the Silverado. And let me tell you, they did a phenomenal job. And we'll get to that in a minute, but first let's take a look at the bed. Uh, customer did elect to go with the spray in bed liner. Plus he has the multi, uh, multi flex tailgate here. So if you press the bottom button, that means the whole door is gonna drop. If we press the top button, that means just the top portion will drop. So when this top portion drops, you can use this as like a, a stand, a, a laptop workspace, use it as a table. Um, you can lift this up and use it as a backstop. So if you have longer items in here, uh, you can you know push them up against the back here, tie everything down and you'll be a little bit more secure. We're gonna lift this back up. Now we'll drop the full tailgate. It's a slow, uh, slow drop. Now you have your standard tailgate that you can get in. We can press the top button here to drop this down. Now we can walk closer into the bed to get the items that we need, or we can even drop this step down so we can actually get right in, which is super easy. They even make a nice little grab handle here that lifts up to help you out. We do also still have our corner step bumper. So you have a step here that you can use with a handle here and you can kind of jump up and get into the bed as well if need be. You do have uh, 12 tie down points. So there's three on each corner. This one has the LED lighting. It also has the 120 volt outlet. So this bed is pretty much equipped with all the different options that you can get. And you can add more things to it through GM accessories where you can get different uh, attachments, tie down points, things like that, that would go into all these little sections that you see around the bed. My customer decided not to update the wheels or anything like that. So with the RST, these are the 18 inch painted aluminum wheels you would get with the all-terrain tires because this is a Z71 package. The Z71 package also gives you like the Rancho twin tube shocks. It gives you skid plates underneath uh, underneath the, the oil pan and all that sort of stuff. And it does of course give you some uh, specific Z71 badging and it gives you the two-speed automatic transfer case as well. So you'll have like the four high, four low, two high and auto. Under the hood, you're gonna see that this client decided to go with the 5.3 liter V8 engine, uh, just a tried and true engine. Puts out 355 horsepower, 383 foot-pounds of torque, and it's mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission. I just wanna point out two things under the hood real quick. One is the battery uh, location here. You have a nice slide tab that you can slide open to get to your positive terminal in case you had to do a good deed and jumpstart somebody else's car. And you also have a ground post right here. So these are super easy to access. Uh, you know, in case you had to jumpstart somebody. And the second thing I like is that the truck sort of has a cold air intake because cold air is gonna come through the grill. It's gonna come up through these little louvers here. This is all weather stripped. So when the hood is closed, it's gonna be on top of this. Cold air is gonna come in. It's gonna go down that intake tube, which will bring you into your air box here and then into your motor. So it sort of has uh, a way to bring cold air directly into that engine from the factory.
So what do you think? Did Chevrolet just hit it out of the park with this one? This interior update is awesome. I love pretty much everything about it. Uh, let me show you around a little bit. Now, if you're familiar with Chevrolet buttons and knobs, you will be very familiar in this truck very quickly because a lot of the buttons and knobs are the same. They're just located in different positions and laid out laid out slightly differently. Like if you look at the door panel here, you know, unlock windows, mirrors, all that stuff is pretty straightforward. Your four wheel drive controls, your headlights, your fog lights. Again, it's very similar to what we've been used to in, in previous models. Uh, where you see the big difference is the screens, obviously, which we all know uh, was something that was much needed as far as an update. And then uh, just a couple of rows of buttons here and then your whole climate setting. So again, everything functionally is pretty much gonna be the same. Uh, just laid out a lot nicer a lot uh, a lot cleaner and even more luxurious if you ask me i do like this gideon and dark atmosphere uh, interior because it kind of highlights the two-tone right you have your dark brown plastics along the back you have your sort of soft touch materials here to trim out the top of the dashboard the dashboard is lower and because our screen is horizontal it gives you a, a great amount of uh of screen as far as the size, yet you still get very good visibility out the front window because you don't have a vertical screen and a higher dashboard or anything like that. So, you know, it, it feels very spacious in here. It feels like a very open, uh, open cabin. And with the lighter materials, I think it even opens it up even more. Another thing I noticed just sitting in here and kind of going through buttons and knobs is the placement and then the little touches to detail, which I don't even know if this is planned out by GM, but it, it works out perfectly. Like for instance, your arms on the armrest, obviously you can hit your shift knob. Now, when you want to change your climate, you can actually rest your hand right here on the shift knob to make any climate changes that you want to make. You know, if you want to change your dials, uh, for temperature, turn your system on or off, use your heated seats. You know, you have a place to plant your hand. So when you're driving, your hand's not moving around with the bumps on the road as you're trying to find, you know, what buttons you're looking for. Now, the same thing right here, you have this panel here, which is a nice decorative um, trim, but at the same time, it's sort of a spot you can put your hand while you're pressing hazards or dropping tailgate or turning on your lane uh, departure warning, lane keep assist. You know, again, it keeps your hand planted rather than trying to maneuver buttons while you're driving. And then the reason I thought of this actually was when I got to the radio, because you may be in the same position when you try to make a radio change or you're doing something on the screen. And again, you hit a pothole or something, it might move your hand. Well, you have this section here that's kind of flattened out, which again, appears to me to be a perfect spot to kind of rest your hand while you make any changes to the screen or select any buttons uh, that aren't gonna be, uh, you know, your hand wouldn't be subject to the road conditions. You'll always be uh, precise on what you're pressing. And that's important when you're driving down the road. You wanna make sure your eyes are on the road so it'll be easier and um, you know, probably safer to be able to have more uh, more control over how you're pressing these buttons. I don't know, does that seem like that would be a thing? I think that's why this was designed this way, but uh, I, I could be wrong. On the steering wheel, you're gonna notice two big things, paddle shifters, up shifts on the right, down shifts on the left. So with this new shift knob here, when you go to drive, you would then just tap down to go to L and once you're in L, you can paddle through the gears, that 10-speed transmission, and uh, you have a push button for park. So very easy to use. And again, with the paddles, a little bit more control uh, should you wanna manually change those gears. Driver information buttons are here, as well as your Bluetooth controls. And now we have the big screen that we also see in our new Tahoes and Suburbans. So you have your, um, you know, your whole driver information center, which is gonna give you all sorts of vitals of the vehicle and your trip, your tire pressures, your uh, driver assistant features, oil life, brake pad life, air filter life, you know, just a ton of information. And then you also have your um, ability to go in here and change what you see in each pod, whether it be left or right. So if you wanna change your left side pod, you can keep it a compass, you can go to time and temperature, tire pressure, fuel economy. You know, you have a lot of different versatility on what you can change these uh, pods to on each side. And then the same thing with your lower gauges. Uh, one, you can change them. I guess minimum is just the, the fuel range. Medium is giving you fuel and temperature. Maximum is giving you fuel, temperature, battery, and oil pressure. So definitely highly customizable, uh, which is great. You can you can use this vehicle and, and see the things that you wanna see based on how you're using the vehicle. The other thing you'll notice on your little pod here, we have a Chevy Silverado with our drive mode. If we go to normal, you can see it looks like this. If you go to sport, it'll change the graphic. If we go to off-road, it'll change the graphic yet again. Um, now, this is a satin steel truck. It looks like in this image, it's not red hot like the vehicle is here. Um, I also noticed that when you go to reverse, uh, your backup camera with surround vision is gonna show you 
uh, just a great pickup truck that in fact has a sunroof when this vehicle does not have a sunroof. So uh, they haven't gotten to that point yet where it's customizable literally to your exact build. But maybe in the future with software updates and stuff like that, they'll be able to do that. It seems like something they could they could definitely do. And that would really be an attention to detail uh, to have like the color of your vehicle and you know whether or not it has a sunroof or not, that sort of thing on those little, those little graphics. That would be pretty sweet. As far as storage space in this model, there's plenty of room to put things. So, I mean, you can put a cell phone here. You can put a cell phone here, which is actually the wireless charging dock. Uh, you can put it here in this little side section. You can put it up here. You know, everybody pretty much carries a phone these days, so it's nice to have numerous positions and places to put things. Um, inside here, you'll notice that you do have a small, uh, small tray and then some storage inside. USB ports and the 120 volt outlet is now inside this cargo uh, area rather than up on the dashboard. You have a huge opening here that when you close this lid, obviously cords and everything can come right through here, uh, which will make it nice and easy depending on what you have plugged in. On this side, you have your glove box, which is pretty standard. And at first I didn't realize this actually opens. There's a button right here that you can press to open that up to obviously store more things there. And then you even have a spot up on top of the screen here where again, you can just pop a cell phone or whatever you might you might need. It's funny, I just made a RAM video the other day and I talked about how they had a 12 volt outlet up on top here, which was nice. We do not have that. That would be a nice addition to this truck. But um, we talked briefly about the climate control settings here, but again, everything's very easy to use. Uh, you know, you have your driver passenger hot and cold, fan speed in the middle, your direction of where you want your air, your heated seats, you know, very easy to operate. And at the very end of that uh, row, you have a USB, uh, USB-C port there. Uh, up on the next row, you have a nice row of buttons. Uh, you do have the one touch button to drop all windows down. So you press that and it drops all four windows at one time, which actually was nice right now because it's getting pretty hot in here. You do have to lift them back up from here. That button is only uh, to drop them down. Then this is a Z71, so you have hill descent control, you have your stability track, your hazards, your power tailgate, your auto start stop deactivate button, your park assist button, and your lane departure warning with lane keep assist. And at the very end there, you have your power volume and a home button for your radio. Again, very easy to operate, very easy to find what you're looking for. And then when we get to this, our new large screen here, you'll see that you can have a home button where you have your different icons. You can swipe independently left and right. You can move these icons around just like you do on a smartphone. So if you want your climate settings on page one, you would press hold it and just drag it to this page. You'll also notice that there's a clock here with four little uh, dots. This is a separate screen within a screen. So as we swipe this up, you'll see you can, um, you can do trailer status functions. You can see your radio and you can see your navigation or you can swipe swipe no you can't swipe okay you press your map button and you can open up the map to the full screen which looks fantastic here's what i was, thought was this going to be there if you press this it'll bring up again that little side menu where now you have your nav here and your radio functions uh trailer functions or your clock in that smaller window um, you always have your menu bar here and then what's nice when you do use apple carplay or android auto uh the apple carplay menu is next to this so this menu will always appear here so you can always go back to your chevrolet home button your audio button google maps phone trailer or google assistant if we hit our camera button you'll see that you have a nice uh nice camera system you do have surround vision which can be turned on or off if you wanted and then just like other chevy vehicles you have front and rear cameras uh, for different positions this is looking down on the front looking down on the back these are your mirror cameras looking uh that is that's the front left and right side that's the back left and right side this is a hitch camera that's going to look directly down at the hitch so if you're towing a boat or something like that and then you can't really see it they're great out here but this does have the ability to add the extra cameras for like invisible trailer and an inside trailer camera and stuff like that this particular truck has that feature um, so that can be added you'll see there's more buttons here that are sort of grayed out as well um, to give you all those different functions depending on what you have hooked up I kind of ran through this pretty quick. I'm kind of getting myself familiarized with it as well while I have this truck here. A uh, customer's gonna pick it up probably in a couple of days uh, once we get everything uh, ready to go and squared away for them. But for now, if you have any questions at all, just put them down in the comments below. Again, Dan, thank you very much for your business. I really appreciate it. And uh, you know, Vehicles are, are part of us. They're part of the family, right? They're part of our lifestyle and, and how uh, you know how we express ourselves. And, and, and it's just a lot of fun being involved as a salesperson with people in their lives, you know, doing things to help them out and, and help them make these decisions on the vehicles that they want uh, for their families. So 
I truly love what I do. It's awesome. If you want to see what it's like being a salesman, learn more about dealership life, hit the subscribe button. Uh, I have a whole playlist out there, which is like two and a half, three years worth of videos of what it's like being a salesman. You can kind of go back and see what it looked like uh, as far as inventories before we had COVID and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, it's really, uh, I have a fun time and I hope you have a fun time watching these videos. So thanks for watching and I will see you, uh, see you in the next video.